Hello, hello, and welcome back into the Rally Cry halftime show, fourth time show. No, fourth time. Yeah, fourth time would be the right fraction for this one. Just making sure I got well, it. Well, this would be third because this is our third one. But it's right? it's a fourth because that's you don't call no because half. Stop doing math. One guys. over two. Yeah, yeah, I, I don't want to do it. it. I don't want to so do it. <laughs> yeah, it's enough. fourth time show. Okay, all right. Don't don't question me on the math here. No I'm, more math. I'm, no more math. I'm the person in charge here. And just for that, <laughs> Steve, you know what we're gonna do. You're going to hype up the players. That's what we're doing All for right. this one. I'm allowing you both to pick a player from either team, though I do want it to be different teams for each of you. And you're mm -hmm. going to give me a bit of a motivational speech for that player. Ch you know, I like to change things up. Very unique games here that we play, at least with my broadcasts. Never done before. Never yep. seen before by any other person. Fully unique idea, yeah. Absolutely. Every single one of them. Every single one. All right, so Summer, you're going to start us off by hyping up a player. So who did you choose? Oh, I I'm picking Dragoon. I'm picking Supernova Dragoon okay. up in the top lane. All right, That's my pick. and go away. Go, get it. Hit it. Okay. All right, Dragoon. The series has been very tense. And we know it, you know it, we all know it, but we've seen some big carry performances from you. That Olaf was astonishingly good. I liked the Mordekaiser pick in this game too, even though it was blind, I liked that one a lot. You've still got some games left in you to maybe get a counter pick over there. Maybe you can swap over to that red side and we can get the, the fabled Dragoon Smash, the Darius that we saw a couple of days ago as well, but you don't need it. You, you can do it on any champion. I have full confidence in you. Only one game away, and you've been fighting for this for so long. I know that you've got it in you. I know that you can make it to NACL the tough way as well. And uh, I'm I'm here rooting for you, Keyshawn. I'm, I'm here for you, buddy. The Knackle Shack way, right? The Knackle Shack. Yes. Cannot How tough are you? <laughs> I cannot believe that Smacks not only jinxed Supernova after game two, but also doubled down by picking a Supernova <laughs> player to give a uh, hype to. So, uh, yeah, wow. I'm confident. By the way, we we, we save our, set our predictions before. I'm flip-flopping. Supernova's going to win. I didn't know Are we could do confident? that. I, I know LCS you, does that. Are we allowed no, to do no, that? No, I see. I, is I'm flip-flopping. This, this, this is my show. You're not allowed to do that. All right. The flop's All right. been flipped. No, no, it's too no, late. No, 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 I've unflipped. My show the now. Flop. Bring the camera to me. Bring it to me. <laughs> whoa, I'm flip flopping whoa, whoa. right what now. What's going on here? It's me. Okay, Supernova's gonna win. That's that's my real hype up. All right, Supernova's got this. Dragoon, you got this. The rest of you guys, you got this as well. Team, Team Fish Taco, it's not even Tuesday. We got this. Go Supernova. Isn't that supposed to be Fridays though for fish tacos? Oh, nope. but it's Saturday. Yeah, it's Saturday. It's Saturday. So it, doesn't, Saturday. it doesn't matter anyway. It's neither oh, of yeah. those. Fr Friday fish. Oh, right, you know yeah, what? that makes sense. You know what, Summer? I, I'm gonna. I was gonna score you only like a five for the original speech, but you know, after that, I'm gonna. I'm gonna Wait, bump no, it up to an eight. No, no. I'm gonna. No, 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 no. I, I set Max up for the follow-up. Come on. Well, that's you, your can fault. I get like that's bonus points? Yeah, that's your fault. Yes, <laughs> your fault. This is a game Maybe. show after all. <laughs> yeah, I didn't tell you Maybe that. Maybe I can do it for you too. Yeah. All right. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. Well, let's lift We're each other up here, Smax. I like this. Yeah. All right. Uh, so I does that like mean this. I'm Team Fish Taco? I, I yeah, should pick yeah, someone yeah. from the other team? <laughs> yep, okay. Yep, yep, yep. <clears throat> Dardock. Baby. Go. Dardock, Go. come on. Come on, man. Let's have a real talk. Look, I know that Red, level one, kind of into the lane a little bit. <laughs> and I know that you just you made the decision. We Let's all acknowledge it. In the game, you said, nope, I'm not. I'm, I'm out. <laughs> you did this to yourself. And then you went and invaded. Play around Red a little bit more. You saw how clutch he was in these late game team fights. If he's in a more advantageous position earlier in the game, in my opinion, the quicker you can accelerate Red, the better. And they do not play to bot lane. They do not play to Red so far in this series. Please, please go bot lane. Also, don't buy GA and then immediately get picked. Um, but if you can do those two things, reverse sweep, baby. Let's go. Deep fish taco prediction. I'm not flip-flopping. I still think they got it in them. It was a very close game number three. But overall, I got the faith, baby. I guess that was a little backhanded. I think you yeah, gotta, you gotta say some more, some more. No, no, but I, I've worked Dardoch. with Dardoch before. Like, uh, oh, yeah? we can clip this and send it to. I've worked with Dardoch back at Optic Gaming. We've chatted, and I know, I know what he responds to. So there was a real oh, talk okay. between, yeah, okay, yeah. That makes yeah, sense. between peers. A, clearly, you know, yeah, you're yeah. Still getting a six for it. You're still getting a six. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Honestly, you wanna yeah. You want to know why? You want to know why? I, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna set you up this. You talked more about red than you did about Dardock. I want I want more not you just about, about what where Dardock can play towards, but what Dardock as a player, what he brings to the team. So there you go. 
Well, we still see exactly what Dardock brings to the team in that last game. Carry potential mm. in the jungle role, something that a lot of the Tier 3 junglers have, but Dardock has the experience to back it up. Uh, able to get in and actually take that Baron, I think that was a crucial moment to actually keep mm. them in that game. Things could have gotten really out of hand if he wasn't able to clutch that one up. But then also just the ability to confidently walk into team fights, know where he needs to be, and have the reset champions like the Viego. If we go into the next game and he doesn't get Viego, I actually think there's much less chance of Team Fish Taco taking this one out. I think that a big part of it was the fact that oh. they had the double reset champions. And I know that this is supposed to be the hype and already I'm, I'm going back <laughs> again, but I'm just talking about the series yeah, holistically. You said that's now. what works. Here's that's what he like, responds to. That's what he the thing is, he's like slowly climbing himself up in points, and then he just top. It's he's just toppling his own <laughs> Jenga set here yeah, every time. Okay. He's just like, uh, yep, I'm building it up and just kick. Nah, Shanley, you suck what happens block, when you let a play-by-play -play <laughs> just keep talking? We, it just turns into nothing oh. at the end. It's like, ah, it started with something there. But, uh. but, no, but no, you said you, that's you, what he responds well to, so maybe this is effective for him, okay? Could be, but also, it, I, I will push so, back a little bit, Steve. A play-by-play -play would first yell really loud and then <laughs> say nothing afterwards. Saving the energy, okay? You know, so, you might be yeah. able to do that, but I still got one, maybe two games ahead of me. Yeah, I mean, you, you should have just watched the AOE Maryville games. I may have gone a little bit too ham. I was watching those. I was but, watching those. you know what? Worth it. Right now, we have the potential of the comeback story for Team Fish Taco. It's only one game. Granted, only one. But now, Summer, I'm going to ask you this because you were hyping up Supernova. I'm going to make you talk about Team Fish Taco because you flip-flopped, and I'm unflopping the flip, and you're going back to them, and you're going to tell me how Team Fish Taco wins this next game. Okay, before I do... My flip is still flopped, okay? No, it's I not. I've unflopped the flip, the flip, the flop. No, Smacks, I, I'm on I, your side. I, I, I will, I will, it, for the record, okay? it's been flipped. Yeah, it has. But I, I will I talk like about Team Fish Because as we did see that tweet from, from Bree, I think in game two, uh, using the hashtag NACL, by the way, use hashtag NACL on Twitter. Uh, but I am also a fan of Team Super Taco. I like both of these teams. I've been a fan for a very long time. <laughs> And I, I want to see them both succeed. Unfortunately, only one of them can win. But the way the Team Fish Taco wins, I'm right there with you, Kangas. I think Red has had a phenomenal showing this entire tournament long. I think if he and Daption can link up again and make these team fights work, then that is a great avenue. And I also want to say, things look a lot better for Team Fish Taco, Taco the wackier champion that Alorum picks. I think that's a very big deal here. Nico, certainly the wackiest so far. I want to get wackier. I want to make sure oh. that we have even crazier champions for Alorum to play. I think that's where he's at his best. So, See, but this is the wackiest. I have, I have a problem when it comes to Alorum because I feel like with Alorum's champion pool, that these wacky picks that normally would be considered wacky because he plays them so much, they no longer have that same effect only when they're in his hands. Are you telling me that if he pulled out AP Nocturne top lane, you wouldn't call that wacky? Okay, if he pulled that out, I'd call it wacky, but he well, hasn't what, played what that yet. What scale does Nocturne have of his AP? Uh, fear. It, it's, it's fear, yeah. Yeah. I've played it before. Magical would know. Yeah, exactly. yeah Magical would know. I, I, you didn't even have to say that. I already knew. <laughs> I played it with Hextech uh, Rock Belt, too. It was fun. Oh, it was a lot of fun. Sounds good. Then, no, you I don't think that's going to get them to win. I'm not going to well, lie. You do that, then you get a magic tooth. It's really fun, actually. But I do agree that Alorm... That sounds good. Alorum being enabled will be big for Team Fish Taco, I think. And the same can be said for Supernova. Dragoon enabled gets them wins. Yeah. Top lane has become, in my opinion, the most impactful, at least in terms of the early game. Late game, it is still yeah. Azog versus Red, and we saw that in this last game. Red popped off. Azog did not in the fight. But early on, it feels like it also has been a lot about the Dragoon and Alorum show. Steve, I'm glad you said I didn't. I didn't even need to set you up. I was gonna make you talk about Supernova. You did it for me, and because of that, I'm also gonna give this back over to you to get us into Game Four. Does Team Fish Taco make this a full five-game series, or does Supernova claim a spot for the summer split? Let's find out. Thank you, Magical. It's not gonna be a sweep. Whatever happens here, as Team Fish Taco have picked up one win has the momentum shifted if they're able to get two in a row it's very often that we see the reverse sweep come through although in this tournament we did see actually uh, a stop to that from aoe but regardless i think the team fish taco are in a good spot if they can keep that momentum rolling forward now swapping sides yet again back to blue yep and this time around you can't pick Olaf on three for Supernova because that's been banned away. Just like you said after game two, Kangas, uh, Team Fish Taco has acknowledged that Dragoon is just a little bit too good at that champion. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, as seems to be a trend in this tournament with player like, players like Quacker as well, better to just ban it. Better just get it away from us and try to win 
uh, elsewhere, as we still have that classic Caitlyn ban. The the Zaya as well is tagged on there, even though Azog didn't have the greatest showing in the last game compared to Red's Jinx, still very threatening, and they do want to get rid of it. I wonder if this is an Aphelios lock-in early. They did also play the Jinx last game, so maybe they're not yeah. too incentivized to lock in an AD carry super quick. But was I off the table? Maybe. Nope, it's instead the Annie lock-in, presumably for Robbie Bob. Yeah, denying that one away from Onad as well. Very valuable first pick to pick up for your team. Provides a lot. And as you said uh, earlier in the show, Robbie Bob, quite good at playing the facilitating style here. So glad to see it. Although this is the crucial champion that they've forgotten to take away. And in the first two games, stolen away by Team Fish Taco in the third one. Not quite so lucky in game four, and Onat gets his hands on the Ari. Not only that, Kisno on Viego, their resets have swapped to Supernova. And that was what I had highlighted before we got into pick and ban. If uh, Dardock is not on the Viego, I actually, that's probably like a good 5% confidence drop for me <laughs> in wow. the team. I feel like that's actually such We're an enable for but he is still going for the Lee Sin. Okay, still carry, still uh, engage, still has tools to make things happen. In the early game, too. This is not a champion that we're going to see a full clear on. Please, please, please just go gank somebody at level three, yeah. Lee Sin. Uh, as Dardoch, he, he knows better than anybody, I'm sure, how powerful that champion is very early. But I cannot stress enough how much better Supernova looks when Kisno is on Viego and when Onat is on Ari. These two are such powerhouses on these champions, and they're really adept at the skirmishing. That is what Onat has made a name for himself doing throughout many, many years, or not, well, not really years, but many, many series of gameplay, not only on this team, but on others in Collegiate 2. So very happy to see him on this champion. Red on the Aphelios, like you were saying, that might be the possibility, not going to Jinx again. Interesting. Kasante locked in red three for Supernova. They could have gone for a carry. They could have gone for a support. Saved counter pick for Dragoon for last, but instead they say, hey, this has been banned too many times, so let's just lock it in early and save that bot lane to the last second. Maybe see what the support is before they know what they want to answer into it. Yeah, I'm kind of bummed out by this Cassante pick, honestly. This is yeah. one of those tanks that Dragoon has kind of been jailed to over the past few months, uh, many, many times for a Supernova, and especially blind picking it, I'm not super, I'm not super, uh, you know, happy about that one here for Supernova. I would have liked yeah, to see that it's one. It's kind of out of left field, honestly. <laughs> yeah. Especially for the rest of the series and how it's played out. But I mean, Dragoon, is, it's not like he's bad at Cassante. It's just, I really like this team when he is on that carry, but perhaps Supernova thinks that they already have a few few players on those carry champions already in that Viego and that Aryan. They yeah. just need some more facilitative champions. And maybe it's time for Dragoon to take that back seat today. That's a big part, is I think Cassante is the type of tank where he still can carry in a way if he gets ahead, yeah. has a lot more agency than something like a Scion or a Malphite would have. So I don't hate the idea of this. And then uh, you can allow Kisno to actually carry on the Viego instead. They still have their bot lane to select right now. They went for an Ash like earlier the Ash. in the series yeah. when they were in a similar position. So I wouldn't be too surprised if they went back to something like that. I like the Ash a lot here. That, that pick threat, yep, there it is. It's very, very good with the reset champions of Viego and Ari. I'm going to be parroting a lot of what I said in that game too here because <laughs> a lot of that is very, very similar. Another strong backbone champion to the more flashy frontliners here for Supernova with the Ari and the Viego. And Azog played it really nicely on that Ash in that, that game too. So I'm really looking forward to seeing that one again. We're still looking at some support champions that are possible to be picked by Daption and by Chookies as the Malphite gets locked in here for Team Fish Taco. Solid engage tool for them. They have the Annie as well. Annie Malphite has been kind of terrifying for teams that don't have a clear front line that can you know push back any engaged potential. If you lock down the Viego, that is the name of the game here for Team Fish Taco. And I think that the uh, the Thresh makes a lot of sense. Pairs incredibly well with the Aphelios. Can also have that follow-up engage on top of the Annie, on top of the Malphite. So, boom. There we got oh. it. Oh, Instalock Brom. Yeah, for a Yordian bot lane duo there. I do like that one against the Thresh. It can stop a lot of those engages. Uh, the engages that it cannot stop super effectively, though, are Annie and Malphite. So, you will have to rely a lot on 
doing things after being stunned up by the Tibbers in the Malphite Ultimate, knocking you into the air. So you're gonna have to hope the Supernova is more durable than that, and then can follow up with things like the Glacial Fissure. Although ideally, you're either getting your shield up first, or you're not engaged on, they're engaging onto Kisno, then you stand behind me and then throw up the shield. Mm. So it's about absorbing the follow-up, not necessarily the initial punch. So I like it either way. Like whether you're able to stop the initial engage or just follow up, I think it works for what Supernova want in this composition. Uh, there's less of like big engage tools go forward, but a lot of pick tools between the Ash Arrow, between the Charm from Ari, allow this Viego to reset, allow Kisno to pop off against Dardock. We talked about the experience differential between these two players does not thwart Supernova. They are giving Kisno the keys. Ooh, we got a tweet from Alk Battery. That's the copy pasta, the reverse sweep one. And we keep saying that I'm jinxing it. Okay, that is the classic jinx, all right? <laughs> this is Dimitri's fault. How could we let this happen? Using the hashtag NACL on Twitter. Yeah, there it is, see? Supernova blames him too. <laughs> all right, good. I'm I'm removed wow, from you all dodged blame. Supernova knows this. That's, that's kind of crazy. That's what yeah. I'm saying. Thank you, Dimitri, for taking one for the team and uh, being the actual one to jinx Supernova. But this is a long jinx, invade, okay? Max. They, they, they went bot into the wave, into the lane. They still swept the tri bush. They know that there's no vision. Okay, it's just for the ward. They're not going to full commit. All right. I mean, I, I like that they're going for that, though, because Braum is just so, so good at level one. You can stun mm. up so many people for so long, and Ash is the perfect champion to follow up on that one. So I like the attempt, but it does end up fruitless. That doesn't mean that the early game can't be explosive for Supernova, though. It does look like we're getting another game in a row where Kisno is pathing towards that bottom lane, starting on the top side. And while Dardock is not matching him this time around, we can still see those big plays start to happen in that lane early. And Dardock's actually going for the Raptors. If, if Dardock doesn't go towards the buff after this, that means the Supernova might not know where he is. Okay, nope, never mind. He will go right to the buff. So now they'll see it. They'll be like, oh, he started Raptors. I thought it would have been a cute opportunity to either just path topside immediately uh, or even look for an early gank, but either one will happen. It's just going to be mirror, or rather not mirrored starts, alternating starts from the junglers. Seen that many, many times from Kisno. I think this is the first time that Dardock has actually started on the bottom side. So that's pretty interesting. Unless I'm forgetting one of the games, but he's definitely done it twice. Um, Swishing it up this time is Lee Sin and did go for a full quadrant clear pathing toward the Krug. So there is still that possibility that he makes something happen in this bottom lane very early on. And uh, yeah, I, I would love to see that one, honestly. There's, there's a lot of follow up here in this bottom lane, but if you do it right now, then you don't have a Felios purple gun quite yet. So I see the hesitation from Dardak. I think that's probably why. Yeah, maybe heard uh, half of my pep talk, but not the rest, <laughs> as he will hover very early, but now passing top side. That means Kisno's actually passing bot side here mm. as the death sentence lands. Ooh, actually flays him further back as opposed to underneath the turret as Azog actually walks up to trade onto red now. So health bar is going to be about half for the bot laners as that does favor Supernova. Kisno's on this side of the map. Yeah, I want to take some quick time to talk about the big comps as a whole here, because I think yeah. Supernova is the most classic example here of what I call a secret carry composition, where they've got a lot of flashy things happening in the front, and then they have a really like simple backliner here in the Ash that can definitely deal a lot of damage. I wouldn't be surprised if this is a game where Azog is the damage leader for Supernova, even if Onat and Kisno are popping off, because while everyone's getting the resets and everything, you do have that facilitation from the Ash slows. You have the Ash ultimate coming through, and we expect this Ash to go for a very similar build to the last game. Things like that Kraken Slayer, maybe a Blade of the Ring King as well to try to cut through. Things like the Malphite, and Azog has done a great job of pumping out that damage throughout this entire series. So that's what I'm looking forward to in Supernova's team fights to come. Has the Ghost, so it can position very easily in those fights as well. Red, unfortunately, has to take the cleanse. You're kind of forced to <laughs> against yeah. a charm it's and an ash arrow and even the Brom stun as well, so it makes sense. There was a short little window there. I thought maybe they go for a dive. They do not reset from red and Daption instead, so Kisno will instead just grab the invade camp here. Take away most of the chicken nuggets from Dardok. Yeah, to touch on Teamfish Taco's comp a bit, they've got a comp that is very 
One big explosion is the fight, and if it goes on any longer than that one big explosion, we're very sad because they have, you know, that first engage is, Ooh. hold on, one second. Yeah, Kiss not here. necessarily winning this one. Lee Sin's pretty strong in these kind of situations. Stacks up that Conqueror very fast and will push Kisno out of the jungle. Eyeing the Raptors there as Kisno's gonna be a little bit behind on that clear. Maybe Darda can even start to look up at that Krug camp too. One good thing about this is that Kisno doesn't have any camps to clear uh, other than those Krugs and We'll have a lot of time to maybe go influence some of these lanes. It won't be top lane though, because Dragoon did just recall. Wait, this actually, is it very might be top bold lane. from Dardoch. You, you don't necessarily have shove yet. I mean, Alorm is close to six, but probably not there yet. Okay, so Kizno will just push him off. So Dardoch's not going to fight for it, but he thought maybe I can just sneak it away. Okay. Well, Dardoch, he does at least get the medium Krug. That's something. <laughs> his, uh, his time there, probably going to go right back to clearing. Stragoon does get the teleport back into that lane. We'll start pushing yet again. Actually, I don't think he's pushing. I'm pretty sure he's got a nice little lane state up there where Alorum is going to have to lose a couple of these minions. But here's what I was talking about. Kiss no, this is your time. Charm just missing onto Robbie Bob. Nice sidestep. All right, yeah. Dodges on, on both of the crowd control skill shots. And again, we got we to gotta remember that Robbie Bob, he is that late game carry for Team Fish Taco many, many times. Not on only this team, but also on University of St. Thomas. He is clearly, he clearly knows what happens when a lot of these players want to come and fight him very early because everyone knows how good he is at those late game exchanges and he's able to dodge out on these. I always love seeing Robbie Bob just playing so calmly at every stage of the game. He's one of the one of the calmest players, and I mean that in the best way. Yeah, in that last game as well, I think that we see the strengths of players like Robbie Bob show up. Still, it's gotten Team Fish Taco a slight lead in this early game. Very slow start, kind of like game one of the series where no kills, no early action to start things off. Who are we favoring in this kind of game state? Hmm. The late game here is really interesting. I was trying to get at it with the the comp analysis that I threw in there a bit, where Team Fish Taco has a big explosion of a fight opener. They don't have that much follow-up damage, and I'm a little bit concerned if they do run out of steam if it goes really late, because if it does get really late, then Supernova is going to have some pretty durable members on this team. Braum very good at spreading that durability to other yeah. allies as well. And if they don't pick their targets correctly on Team Fish Taco's side, then fights are going to be pretty tricky, you have to imagine. And Shuki is also one of those other members from UST, Collegiate Champions. You know, it's, uh, it's a fun conversation to always have with people in the scene. It's like, okay... Uh, back in my day, I remember it was like, what was better at the time, the amateur scene or collegiate for actually getting players to pro because it was much closer. It felt like, you know, tier three amateur was kind of taking over the conversation, but now it seems like variable players like this that have come up through the collegiate scene, putting that back in the conversation, you know, <laughs> competition's yeah. competition and getting that experience can set you up for success. And now you're in a position where you could be the difference maker in this elimination series. And for a very long time, it really was just like, okay, there, there's the tier three teams, and then there's also Maryville. Is, ooh, hold on, this could be the. This is just a chunk out onto Onat, just adding some extra pressure. But as I was saying, it really was just Maryville for a very, very long time in the collegiate space. That was like the really competitive team. But now, with University of St. Thomas having many players in the space as well, it's kind of two teams up there. Uh oh. Oh, Kisno doesn't land the stun to start off. Dardoch with the plan. good kick back. Oh, and that's done. Oh. Robbie Bob, how aggressive do you want to get here? Kisno pushes him back, but that Tibbers is still oh, up. Oh. Shookies jumps into the fight now. Flashes! Oh, Ooh, that was aggressive. As Zog is nearby, getting the damage into Robbie Bob, but not enough for the kill. Dragoon might find a flank here. Kisno's oh, got to be careful! No. On vision! Alorum with the flash ult will claim for his blood. That was not the way to walk Kisno as he was so low from that exchange, as was just about everybody who got in the middle of it. But Alorum found the inside track to the river. Dragoon is not able to communicate to the team. Hey, there is a huge giant rock of a man flying at you from <laughs> downtown. As Kisno finds out the hard way. First blood the literal alarm, alongside a red buff. Yeah, true. Yeah. 
Uh, also, I think Kisno is sticking around because you have Flash, you have the ultimate, you're looking for a reset. You think, oh, I can pop off here, you know, like be the bait. Yeah. But no, uh, Lorem uses a lot of resources for that, but will get the kill. Now back into lane with the uh, plated steel cap, making Dragoon's job even harder. That armor will go a long way, even against things like the Ash, things like the Viego. I want to see Supernova go back to the basics here a bit. I want to see them return to what had them on the match point to begin with, which was taking the Drakes, and I think that's what they're acknowledging right now, moving over to that objective. Yeah, they're going to give up the Rift Herald here, but adding on that bot lane pressure, making sure they're securing themselves a clear win condition to play for in the late game. I think that is what makes Supernova look so consistent so far today, and they will secure themselves that first Hextech Drake. Dragon traded for the Herald. So far in this series, Dardock has been putting a little there more attention there as Robbie Bob goes for another trade. You have the first strike. You're just cashing in a little bit of gold every time you do that and also pressuring Onat. As now the Ari player needs to think, am I going to die here? There is a Lee Sin. They could always jump on top of me, just claim the Herald, and we'll even take away the Raptors. Oh, Kisno is not going to clear out the ward. Wondering if yeah, he like spotted that. I don't think he knows it's there at all. No, it's Onat. You gotta be careful with the Lee Sin in your lane. I think he's just gonna be able to clear out this quite nicely, but unfortunately, again, Supernova was spotted on all these wards, and Fish Taco knows that they do need to escape pretty quickly. Unfortunately for Kisno, yeah, not able to uh, check and see if he's spotted on any of these control wards. It's not the first time this series that's happened to him. And that's now two Raptor camps in a row stolen by Dardock. I believe the level two and three camps and then even gets back to his own Raptors is getting a sizable lead for himself over Kisno with the first item completed. Supernova's jungler will be on the back foot from this position but nothing to you know big to fight over in the meantime. We did just see the objectives claimed earlier. I'm looking at Dardoch to see where you want to put this Herald right now on the bottom half of the map. They have not played through this lane often this series. Maybe this is the game where they say yep yeah, give Red the gold. I think this is definitely going to happen. Yeah, Dardoch has the Rift Herald. He is in this lane. Ooh, that's Ooh. unfortunate. That sentence barely going wide right there. They'll see Dardoch. They'll see Kisno. Everybody handshakes. Says, "All right, no play. <laughs> Walk away." Yeah, that is that is one of those ones where, as Daption, you're thinking, "I'm so sorry, guys. <laughs> I, just, yeah. I, I flubbed it. Could have landed yeah. it. Could have been big, but uh, yeah, Drama unfortunate there." Back. How much does it again. want? Ash Arrow in onto Daption. Speaking of, he's down! And the reset comes through for Kisno. So Supernova just walk up and check uh, Zeepfish Taco. Say, how confident are you feeling here? <laughs> and they will get two for free. And yeah, no cleanse on red at all. So whoever they hit with that arrow was definitely going to die. This is going to swing the gold right back over to Supernova. And it's one of those moments where you as the jungler have this Rift Herald. You know which lane you want to send it in, but you just stick around a little too long. It's a lot about that timing, more so than you would think, to make sure that a Rift Herald is as effective as it possibly can be. And Dardoch does miss that timer. Luckily, you do have it for four total minutes, so there's still more time for him to find those plates, but I don't know if it'll be bot lane. Ooh, Daption had flash. I thought maybe you go for the lantern flash to bring red closer and go for trickies, but not going to go for it. Uh, it's just multiple plates over to Azog, who has now completed the Kraken Slayer plus boot, so a little bit ahead of red. I actually love to take a look at the overall gold right now because it, it feels like Team Fish Taco, most of it's probably in their jungle, and it's actually on red. Okay, look at that. He'd, I think they have two turret plates down there because that alongside the cull is definitely helping True. out Red's gold intake quite a lot. Speaking of plates, Alorum does have two of them up here in this top lane too, so that does make the Rift Herald pop top lane much more appealing. There it will be, Alorum and Dardoch. I think are probably going to share the gold here unless Alorum can't get in range of it. He's trying. You're doing a good job of oh, trading health it. onto Dardoch in case there's a potential dive happening. So it will be the crash, the plates. Alorum cashes in on another one as Supernova put all their attention bot side. Team Fish Tiger's bot lane perennially playing weak side of the map. <laughs> and even the big rug is stolen away. Uh, I think they have enough damage. Yeah, the, the plates just fell. So they definitely have enough damage to get that first turret. Supernova just barely in the gold lead for the first time in this game, it feels like. As, oh, 
Dragoon is oh, still let's go, uh, under fire from the jungle. Oh, let's see it all out from Dragoon. Oh, the Blast Cone oh. and even the Dragon's Rage. So Dardock was safe there. Onat does not land a charm onto Robbie Bob, but gets the flash out of the Annie. Robbie Bob has to limp back under turret after blowing TP very recently. It looks like he just CP'd into lane based on the cooldown. Getting Annie's flash is really important, though. That is, okay, well, wow. And getting the kill is also really nice as yeah. well. Yeah. <laughs> very rare, but oh, the turnaround. Kisco okay. was tanking the whole time. Red flash in the wall. Oh. The Aphelio is popping off in this oh. fight, and Dardog once more. Deepish Taco will catch the throw of Supernova underneath the turret. Even Alorum will join in on the fun. And that is four killed for one. Okay, maybe killing Annie's not actually that important, Genghis. <laughs> I don't think it's worth trading four kills for us. Team Fish Taco pounce on the members of Supernova that go way too far underneath this turret. Yes, that is just a little Annie underneath this turret, but we're yep. committing so much underneath this turret. Kisno does take the time to steal the soul of Robbie Bob there, and he did have the turret shot on top of him, so it took way too much damage there. This sonic way of connecting, again, just make sure that Azog does drop, and this is, Alorum just keeps doing this, where he's able <laughs> to find these avenues to just walk mid, ult somebody, and make sure that they die. He's a very efficient ultimate so far. He's two yes. for two on kills. Uh, also, one of those moments, if Trekkies just tanks one more turret shot, I think the play's fine. Because then Kisno mm. gets the reset and gets out without tanking aggro. Trekkies flashed out of turret range. Oh, those little moments make big impacts because now it's a 2,000 lead for Team Fish Taco and they got the dragon slowing yeah, the stacking of Supernova. That Drake's really important. It's an Ocean Rift now, so one to one on those drakes R rift herald i believe is available pretty soon yeah there it is so it could be an objective to fight over supernova they still have this skirmish comp they still have these champions that are oh so powerful when you get those resets down and uh it's unfortunate no arrow yeah uh, close they're still fishing for it i don't dislike when teams do this with the ash yeah. compositions just throw it out see if something lands there's nothing crazy to fight for right now other than the Herald, and they're still on it early anyway. See Dardock in the top lane, but I think he's just hovering in case Robbie Bob gets jumped on. They're not going to contest. That is Herald picked up for Supernova. Hot lane turrets taken by Alorum, though. Nobody there to match his Dragoon. Did commit all of his time to making sure that Herald goes the way of Supernova. They're going to need to make that one worth it, though, in order to uh, actually combat that turret trade, because, I mean, Rift Herald, yeah, it does give you some gold when you take it, but the primary purpose of Rift Herald is taking turrets. And uh -oh. whoop de doo Alorum also took a turret there. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh. Well, the Spirit Rush jumps to safety. Not too bad. Yep. I want to play a game else. here, Smacks, as right. we're, we're in a oh, slight games. little state. Yeah, a little games. Uh, we're going to need production's help for this one, so production, get ready. Smacks, who do you think right now has the most gold in the game? <laughs> I think it's Alorum. I think it's Alorum. <laughs> I actually do. Production, can we take a look whenever you have an opportunity? I'd love to pop yep. that. Yeah, there it is. <laughs> <laughs> it's close. It's close. It but is. Yeah, yeah, that's a pretty fed Oh, fight. Well, we, oh, played this game. Oh, wow. we played this game just at the perfect time for us yeah. both to be right. <laughs> <laughs> Immediately <laughs> ticked down over to red. I mean, that's what Teamfish Taco wants, though, to be honest. They want both of their players up there at the top, and they specifically want red to be there as he is that late game carry for this team. I mentioned before how they have this big explosion in the team fights, and then not a whole lot after that. Well, that's not entirely true if Red can stay alive and in a good position, because he, of course, is still that marksman, and he kills, still can provide all that extra artillery from the back, especially depending on what guns he's got. So uh, Red certainly has that possibility for him and for Team Fish Taco to potentially take us to that game five. And it's so surprising to me that they were that close in gold and Red actually took it up because of how weak side they were playing down there. As the hell is dropped here in the mid lane, as uh, gets hit, arrow lands onto Dapshin. The turret's still up. They do commit onto the Thresh, and they get the turret as well, even before the Herald charge goes off. So this Herald's going to charge a tier two now. Yeah, winds up, and there it is. All right. It's a nice chunk of damage onto that mid lane turret. 
in those situations, I actually do still really like dropping Herald, even if you're already going to take the turret, because that just ensures even if the play does go wrong, or even if it takes you a little bit longer than you're expecting to take the turret, it's going to go down and you can still look for something else at the same time, which is exactly what Supernova does. They do get the pick off onto Daption and there, I've seen way too many instances where they don't drop the Herald there because they're too confident and then oh. it comes back to bite them. Oh, Onet. Lands a nice little combo there under Robbie Bob. Team is Ooh, nearby. Kisno's now hunting. Sees the opportunity for a reset and said, we'll just catch Dardock on the Krugs and we'll push him off of it. Okay. Fun to see the wave states as they are currently. I'm, I'm starting to hit the panic button anytime Supernova don't have vision on Alorum. I'm like, all right, there's a rock and fog of war. Be careful. <laughs> yeah. Everybody chill. No fighting. <laughs> oh, this is interesting. Both of these junglers want to reset pretty soon because of the Drake. They're both still, uh, they're, they're still having a bit of an arm wrestle here over the red buff. Arm wrestle. Drake up. <laughs> I said, said one of the one of the trigger phrases for Genghis. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, I know about those. <laughs> oh, yeah, okay. you want to talk about that now? All right, we can talk about that. I can talk about a Lorem getting potentially caught out here. He has ultimate available. Ooh. That sentence from Daption might just save Ooh. his top laner. There we go. Saved it. Alorm can still yeah. look for an engage. He has teleport, okay. so I think the idea is to get back, but Supernova, they want to push we'll the play. envelope here. Get onto Daption, get the kill. Azog flashes the wall and gets it, and Alorm not feeling confident enough to try and punish the Ash. There we go. Finally, ults to safety, but it might be too late. I think Supernova have done enough damage. It depends on what Dardock and Robbie Bob can get done here. They're not going to kill Dragoon, not going to catch him out. Maybe Dardock goes for the steal. Ooh, he's got vision on it, thanks to that sonic wave. No other avenue dropping vision, but they're teleporting for this. Red's full health Taco do want the fight. Now, Alorum used ultimate, not flash, so it's an ultless Malphite, but he can still stand in front and absorb Ooh. hits, but didn't get there in time for Robbie Bob, but they do turn it back around as Dragoon Azog's will dead. fall. Azog getting hit by the melees, not where an AD carry wants to be, and Dardock pushes Onet off of the play as well, so Team Fish Taco, they're right back in it. Oh, wow. wow these, these skirmishes are so close here, but I mean, for Supernova, you can really easily see where the fights work and where they don't. And when they don't, when the Baron is alive, things might get really dire. Okay, Nibish Taco, I was thinking maybe they start that one up, but it's a little too early in the game to actually go for it. They don't want to get too ahead of themselves, just securing the mid lane turret like that hesitancy from them. They still have this lead. They want to keep it. They want to go to that game five. But Kings, Supernova. Yes. They have this Ari ulting in, finding the charm, making Red use his cleanse in that last fight. And it looks so, so good for them. It's, oh, oh, oh my God. Uh, just like this, that. actually. Chains of CC as is. long as possible for the team to make it. And Daption's going to go down here. Trying to buy time, but Ona with the kill credit. Nicely set up by Azog. They had the ward there. Daption backing in a rough spot. I mean, that pays the picture I was trying to, you know, s spread with my with my mouth there. <laughs> trying to trying to <laughs> try to talk about it here. Why not just show it to us? Supernova works when they get the picks. And oh, now they've got a teleport more. flank. All out is available on Dragoon. Okay. Gets onto Robbie Bob, gets onto Red. The carries have nobody in front of them. Lorem's coming around the wall. But Robbie Bob's already down. Red has a Malphite to play with, has a lot of damage, but with no flash, it's gonna be really tough walking up to this bear, and I think Supernova are just gonna try yeah. and blitz it. No, I don't think this works. Team Fish Taco, like I was just saying, when Team Fish Taco's engaging, Supernova has to be super careful. They don't have Ariel, they don't have Viego ultimate. They don't even have Arrow here. This is, this is not good for Supernova. They need to keep Red alive. Team Fish Taco, can they, they do run. it? Yeah, I know. they. They just walk up, they push Supernova off, they say, yeah, we'll ego check you. Okay. It's it's good for Supernova that they learned that lesson. It's, uh, it's still good for Team Fish Taco, though, that they're able to is make this, this happen. Uh, ooh, 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 it's ooh. fine. <laughs> he gets okay. the minions at the end of the day, okay? He gets to go get that experience. That's what he wanted all along, right? Oh, okay, never mind. He doesn't get any minions. <laughs> oh, no, Azog left two of them up, so he, he, maybe he'll get two of those. What a kind boy, Azog. This is going to be a mid lane turret, I believe. They've got Thresh Lantern, so it's pretty safe for Red to TP. hit this one. Oh, we're going for a play oh. right now. Dardox on to Dragoon. Three, three. Bobby Bob has the stun, lands in, hasn't used the Tibbers yet, stacking up a second stun for the fight. Dragoon hasn't used all out yet, gets to safety. Oh. Dardox in, kicks, Azog back, the stun follows up, but there's no damage. Where's the burst? 
Dardox down, and Supernova can turn the play. Watch for Red trying to get damage down. He has got a big front line, and Red picks up the triple kill to secure the play for Team Fish Taco. Oh, Red just has way too much damage in these fights here. Kangas, the ults aren't even there for Alorum and Robbie Bob. They already were used before, but it just doesn't matter. The damage is way too high as uh, I think oh, Alarm has Alarm's dead now. This. Yeah, they, they will get oh, the Malphite, fight, and that means that oh Barrett's off the table. Oh, what a weird game state we find ourselves in, Smack. <laughs> Steve Fish Taco just won big, and they don't even get the uh, the reward for it. This Baron has to be so confused right now. He's been started like three or four <laughs> times, and it's just like, why are you coming over to hang out? And yeah. just, like, uh, oh my god. Uh, this, it's like your car when you keep really forgetting funny. stuff. It's like you walk out the door like, ah, nope, nope, I left the keys. And you're yeah. like, ah, yeah. I forgot the wallet, you know? Exactly. I go already. Aaron's, Aaron's like, I've been ready to go hang out for at least 15 minutes. <laughs> Where are you? Dardock your buddy goes in the really far seat, yeah. in this, by the way. I, I like the, the ferocity that we see out of this player. He's still going for these nasty plays. Chunks out Azog really nicely. Oh. And it's to the point where Team Fish Taco, yeah, they just lose their jungler and the, the fight's kind of over by then, but Azog cannot continue the fight, whereas Red still full HP with the full Bloodthirster shield available. That's the big difference there for Team Fish Taco. Dardock completely okay to give his life for a fight like that. Triple kill on the AD, who's now 503. We're back to live. Red poised to carry this game number four. This would put both teams to match point as Taco Gaming find, or rather, Team Fish Taco, again. sorry, find themselves with a gold lead here as they're now walking up to the Baron. Supernova are on it, down to about half health. Lorem has ultimate. They're trying to lock down the Malphite. That's a lot of cooldowns used on this guy. They gotta kill him. Ooh. Gets the ult off. Oh, Robbie Bob back. Bob. He stuns everybody. And now Red can unload the damage. It's still only one dead so far. They got two. Supernova Ooh. absorbed the initial engage. The stun. Can they get onto Red? Red's gonna have to pull out a miracle right here. Tagged by Brock. He's gonna go down. Stun. Charm follow up. Red's still alive. Red White. 1v5 situation. Oh, he doesn't have the gas in the tank. Supernova did it. They absorbed all of the plays and did not get blown up by Aphelios this time. This is their Baron. They actually did it, Kangas. They actually won a fight where Supernova were not engaging. I cannot believe that actually worked out. Alorum had ultimate. Ravi had flash tibbers. Red uh -oh. had the front line there for him. But now, okay, you got the can dragon. Red survive this? Uh, oh, wait. I think he's just dead. Yeah, no, There's no way this is worth it. Dead. He's got the items, but he does not have anybody to stop Dragoon from going bonk bonk and Onat from going kill. So that is now he to carry down as at least he trades his life for the dragon. This puts him on soul point, but now they got to defend against Baron push. This is probably going to be one, if not two turrets down. Oh, the arrow lands onto not the person you want it to. I don't like this dive, actually. Okay, the turret's down. It's fine. How much more did they go for? Oh. They got Robbie Bob! Whoa. The carries are down. Is that just it? Does Supernova close it out here? They have the Baron oh push. God. There's not a lot of wave clear Ten seconds on, on Red. Team Fish Taco. All right, Red's going to be up soon. Supernova, do not look to force onto the Nexus turrets. Instead, they want to take this these inhibitors. They get middle inhibitor. Dragoon's got a full wave like here. Lorne goes for the engage right now. Good damage to start things off. Red's just joining in. Chucky's in trouble. They got the shutdown. Azog's dead. Dragoon goes all out. Dardox in there. Red unleash and Supernova have oh. to back away. Teamfish Taco. They hold out. Okay, they get the kill onto Azog. Teamfish Taco are still alive in this game. The death timer was short enough to where Red could spawn. But Kangas. That's about all the good news that I have for Team Fish Taco because Supernova, I'm still reeling over the fact that they won that Baron fight. I cannot yeah. believe that this is the same roster that we saw play in the qualifiers. They looked so uncoordinated in the most recent games that we had. They looked even just in this tournament when they played against AOE. I mean, Kisno was not on the same page as the rest of his team. As long as Chookies could not coordinate in these fights whatsoever. And Dragoon was playing the tanks and just looked so lost as he couldn't play a carry. All of those things 
are completely flipped on the script here and they're actually winning these 5v5 engages even despite the champions that they're playing not quite being so good when engaged upon they just had to withstand the Malphite ultimate, the Annie ultimate on top of them, and they still managed to get all of these resets and find a fight where nobody died. I'm so flabbergasted by Supernova's growth in such a short amount of time. You can tell how much this win would mean to them. We heard from Onet in the interview that we got from him earlier in the tournament how much this would mean for Supernova, how much it means for him as a player. Playing the Ari incredibly well here as now the siege continues. On to the turn. tier 2 turret in the top lane. Oh, there's not much left to fight over. There's a dragon in two minutes. It's about the siege. It's about Supernova scene. If we get that Ash Arrow, if we get that Ari Charm, this game could be over. And Dragoon abandoned his post on the flank, but unfortunately for mm -hmm. Supernova, Baron did just expire. So I don't think that turret is going to fall anytime soon. Just trying to continue that pressure, trying to make sure that they're forcing Team Fish Taco back into their base, back into this corner of the map. They can't find anything. Now, I mentioned before that I didn't think it was worth it for Red to take that Drake. Kind of regretting that at this point because Supernova, yeah. they, they did get the inhibitor, but the fact that they did lose out on that Drake and the fact that they're now facing a potential Ocean Soul from Team Fish Taco actually is a really big deal. The gold is not that far in favor of Supernova, all things considered. Team Fish Taco certainly can still find their way back into this game. And I mean, Ocean Soul, that's definitely enough power to do so. Let's see this back. Oh no, Onat backed and didn't get Rabidons. Already had the double needlessly, so this Ari's not gonna be hitting a power spike for the dragon fight. Unless you can get another wave and get it back in, you do have TB coming up, so maybe it's a chance as there's a not a lot of vision for Team Fish Taco in their own jungle. That's brush is set up by Supernova. If Team Fish Taco die to this, then it might just all be over right now. Ashura lands. Ooh, it's in under red. Has the cleanse, cleanse available. So that's cleanse down on Aphelios. Ashura down too, though. And the Ari ultimate down. Those are huge cooldowns. They have to try another engage right now. Oh, he goes in. Lands another oh my one. God. There it is. Dragoon's in there. Alorum answers right on back. On to Onan. Azog free fire. And Alorum's down. Oh, and Dragoon. Dragoon. He got an adaption. That's the front line dead. Team Fish Taco are reeling right now. How did they lose the game? It was in their hands, but it looks like this is the victory march for Supernova. 5v3. Can they close it out? No front line alive for Team Fish Taco. I think Supernova might be able to do it. A wave and a dream. Five members of Supernova. Five members from the Tier 3 League. They might end the game right now. Can Robbie Bob do it? Dardox in there. They got on to Robbie Bob, and he's dead. That's it. That's the game in the series. The lowest seed. The underdog sweep the heart of amateur. Supernova for the first time ever will qualify for the LCS Challengers League. Okay, this... Oh my God. Keyshawn finally fucking did it. He actually made it into NACL. He's been trying this for so long. Oh. He oh. missed out on the spots to get into NACL. He missed out on all 10 challenger spots, all six, uh, all six spots on the provisional teams. But he, he finally did it. He's finally he in it. NACL. He's finally in tier two. Dragoon, he made it. He, he did it himself too. He, oh. And for those I'm wondering- I'm so proud of you, Keyshawn. For those missing out oh. on the contact, Supernova, the longest running Tier 3 organization in the history of the region. And now they qualify for LCS Challengers. Momentous for them, momentous for these five players. Coming in as the lowest seed and making that run. Incredible stuff from them. The Cinderella run is complete. I, the, the, the expectation for Supernova was so low coming into this. And I gotta say, they silenced all the doubters and they will be competing in the NACL this summer. A moment uh, uh, for the team to celebrate and a moment for us to catch our breath as we will be back with an interview from one of the players here after this short break. Let's just send it in there because I want to hear from them. Magical will be back with them after this.
Hello, hello, and welcome back into the Challenger League promotion tournament. It's the Verizon post-game interview, and we're here with the top laner of the victorious, the promoted Supernova. It's the one and only Dragoon Smash. Dude, congratulations. How does it feel to promote into the Challengers League? It's so there's so many there's so much emotion coming out of me right now. Like it feels unreal. It doesn't feel like it's actually set in, but like I know it's reality, right? Like we, we are in NACL. Like as soon as a game ended, like w w like it's I, I just have so much emotion. I like this entire interview. I'm not going to be able to talk properly. I'm I'm just apologizing in advance. You're fine. I'm going to have like that clip of us promoting an NACL like my entire life. Like I will have that saved. I'll be 50 years old looking at this moment. Like if you really think about it, it's crazy. The emotions the entire team had at the end of that game was just, it was unparalleled to anything in my life before. Like everyone's just saying, I love you to each other for like the, like 20 seconds straight. Like we we're just yelling. It was just, it was amazing. I mean, let's be honest. It's fair to say you guys were the underdog of the tournament. Like, everyone was doubting you. Everyone now has to be silenced that you guys have done it. You've not, because not only did you make it in, but you beat a team that had beaten you during the qualifiers. So kind of walk us through, like, what got you guys these victories in these games? I think a lot of it was just, like, being tenacious. Like, it's a best of five. Um, going into it, I feel like our mentals were really good because... We just two won uh, our previous match, you know, kind of reverse swept. And in my opinion, I think this did like have an effect on Team Fish Taco. They kind of lost the game five going into the series, right? We felt like we had a very nice mental edge versus them. And honestly, like, yeah, we were like underdogs, but like, I, I don't want to pull up scrims, but I'm telling you guys, like, <laughs> we did not feel like underdogs. We were coming in confident. I don't think I ever had a shadow of like real doubt. You know, like, I was more confident that we would win this series than lose at every step of the way. I mean, it's fair, because I got to interview Onat when we did, like, the Knackle Shack video, and it, that guy's oozing with confidence. And uh, look at that game f uh, four right there. I got to say, he was really showing it up on the Rift. Like, y yeah, I, I was, like, I was obviously I was watching the game end on broadcast, and all of you guys were, like, spanging, like, Dragoon Smash, you know, and all that. Like, listen, I love, I love the attention. I love the respect you're giving me, but please spam Onat Nation. Like, like, he was the one, he was the catalyst. He was for, like, you guys saw the charm, right? The charm so was good. literally a sniper. It was perfect, right? Like, yeah, my fall off was great. I had like a good execution team fight, but like, dude, he started it all. Like, he just smurfed that last game. Like, there's really no doubt about it. Like, he, he, sh he shut everyone up. Like, he, he just smurfed it. Like. Everyone on my team smurfed that. I just want to highlight that because everyone was spamming my name, but I think they were spamming, <laughs> they should have been spamming Onat. Everyone on my team smurfed this series. I'm proud of everybody. I love my teammate. Like, I love all of them. I love my entire team. I love the staff. Everyone's amazing. It's awesome. I just, it's just such a great story for you. Like, for you, I know why a lot of people have been highlighting you. You've been working so hard at this. Like, I remember back in Scouting Grounds of 2021 where you guys won it all, and I'm like, this guy, this guy's going to be in Academy. This guy's going to be in Challengers. And then I didn't see you there. And so ha tell me about that. Like, now having gone through the tough part, you didn't do the easy route. You didn't just get signed. You worked your butt off getting through everything to get here. Yeah, I mean, I don't want to sound too cocky, but I thought it was pretty illegal. I didn't really get, like, good looks getting into Academy. Um, I'm really looking forward to playing next split and, like, really turning heads, right? Like, yeah, I proved myself, like, you know, literally just forcing myself in the NACL. Props to my team and me for that. But, like, I'm, like, now that it's set in, I'm really looking forward to, like, actually playing in NACL and, like, really proving people wrong that, like, I should be in Academy, like, a long time ago. You know what? I can agree with that sentiment. And I want to ask you another question, just kind of going and looking. Even though it's, you know, a month or so off until we'll have you actually play in the Challengers League, what are some of the top laners you look forward to playing against? Dude, honestly, like, is there so much excitement? Because I've just, I've watched most NACL games. Like, I'm excited going against every single top. Like, um, one in particular is Soul. Uh, he's like probably like one of my closer fellow top laners, right? Um, you know, I bench with him all the time. I really want to go against him, see how we pair up because, you know, we butted heads in amateur like last year. You know, it's re it would be really interesting to see how we match now. Uh, 
I don't know. There's really just everyone. Like, I, I, I would love to go against anybody. Any of the NACL teams sound like a blast to go against. I don't really have too many in like particular that I'm thinking about right now. Well, Dragon, let me be the first one to congratulate you and Supernova to making it to the Challengers League. You guys absolutely smurfed it. it I'm so proud of you guys, every one of your players, all the, you know, the younger players that you have, like Kisno, you who's had a little bit more experience along with Azog. It's so great to see. So I'm going to give you this moment to give any shout outs while you have the podium. I mean, you started talking about it a little bit there. I really want to shout out Onat and Kisno. Like, Azog, Chukis, and I are probably like a little bit more old, like we have more experience with them, right? Uh, we definitely have had our time in like amateur, and I really want to highlight them because they're newer faces and like they just performed. Like they played so well, and I really want to give them kudos. I want to give Kizno kudos especially because like he came in mid split, you know, he's he has less experience than the rest of us to just put it blunt, right? But like, Dude, this guy is just a sponge. He just adapted so fast. And I mean, you just saw in this series, he played well. You know, I just wanted to give him kudos for that because I think he had a lot of pressure on his, on it, pressure on his shoulders because of that. Well, you know what, Dragoon? I'm looking forward to you guys. I, I'm so excited to see you guys. Congratulations again. Go Thanks. celebrate with the team. Go celebrate in general. And we will see you in the summer split. But for now, I'm going to bring back Kangas and Smack so we can close out the day, run through our doing? last little things. So I just, I'm, I'm going to just give a round of applause right there because it's just so good to see the upset right there. Even though Team Fish Tacos, shout out to you guys. You worked your hearts out there. The mm -hmm. five game series against Team Tony Top, they made it competitive all the way through with Supernova. Not one of those games was a smash. So now we get to take a look at the bracket. It has been updated with our newest team to qualify, to get promoted into Ooh. the LCS Challengers League. I gotta say, it feels good to see a, a, a logo like Supernova's in yeah. the top 16 Challengers League. It's a long time coming. I'm excited that the roster did it themselves. It wasn't just that they got accepted in in the initial application program. They had to earn their way in, and that feels even better. Can I be honest real quick? Yes. I, coming into this tournament, did not think that Supernova would, would make it to the second, like the middle column, let alone the third one. On, on this visual right <laughs> here, I thought they were just going to stay on the left. I thought they were going to lose both of their series that they played. Not only did they play a third one, but they won it against Team Fish Taco, a team that beat them in the qualifiers and oh my, I, I, I'm still, I'm still completely not over this. C congratulations to Supernova. Congratulations to all of the players on that team, everyone behind them as well. I know that my my girls Gab and Tiff are <laughs> popping off watching this one. So big shout out to them. And yeah, I'm just, I'm really, really happy. You know, I, I've got. Me too. I, it is one of those ones where I, I've, I have both friends. I have friends on both sides of this uh, this match here, you know, especially coming from the qualifiers, you know, wanted to hype up these teams. And, you know, it's, it's just a shame only one of them gets to go through. But, man, it, it, I can't say it doesn't feel good that it's Supernova doing it. And it's so cool to see newer names like Onat and Kisno popping right. off as yeah. well uh, in that run. It wasn't just like, oh, Passenger is in the Dragoon backpack, <laughs> in the Azog backpack. <laughs> no, everyone did their job. Everyone stepped up at points in that series. And yeah, O-Nat Nation, baby, for that o last Nation. charm at the o end. Ooh. No, it's O-Nation. He already has N-A-T in his name. It's O-Nation. That, that would work, but uh, Dragoon did say O-Nat Nation. Yeah, so we're going to go with we'll, what Dragoon oh, said, okay. O-Nat Nation, for now. We'll talk with O-Nat about this, see if we can't get this figured out. <laughs> but thank you, everyone, for joining us today. We'll be back tomorrow. One more team left to see and determine who gets promoted for the summer split of the LCS Challengers League. Thank you so much for joining us here today, and make sure you go join Bob Ken's chat. Say hello from the rest of us here at the Challengers League. We'll see you tomorrow. Good night.